Hej! Vilken är den varmaste månaden i Australien? Rätt svar. Januari är den varmaste månaden i nästan hela landet. Eftersom programmet som vi nu ska sända är helt på engelska ska jag förklara några ord och uttryck som förekommer i programmet. David Glesson, förfarmare i Australien, använder motorcykel och hund för att, som han säger, shift sheep, flytta får från en paddock till en annan, från en inhängnad till en annan. Här berättar David om de olika momenten i lämmaking, öronmärkning av lamm. Först driver vi in fåren i en inhängnad, we must the sheep, för att kunna draft the lambs from the ewes, Skilja lammen från tackorna. Sedan märker vi lammen i öronen. Mellan de olika passen i The Lamb Marking, öronmärkningen, tar arbetslaget då och då a tea break, en tepaus. I trädungen i övre delen av bilden ligger familjen Glassens homestead, lantgård. Ute på fälten ser vi sheds, skjul. De används som general storage, allmänna lagerutrymmen. På många håll i Australien är bristen på vatten ett stort problem. För att kunna samla så mycket regnvatten som möjligt är bostadshuset byggt med ett stort takyta, roof area, och materialet är corrugated iron, korrigerad plåt. Jag har ett problem när jag matade chucks. Hönsen. Då kommer nämligen parrots, papegojor, till hönsgården och äter upp maten för hönsen. Familjen Glassen får post tre gånger i veckan. Idag är det också bröd och mjölk in the mail med posten. David och Janes två barn går i en skola med 21 elever. Barnen range in ages varierar i åldrarna från 5 till 12 år. Det speciella med den här skolan är att den bara har en lärare som undervisar alla årskurserna i ett klassrum samtidigt. På landsbygden, in the country, är vägen ofta lång till närmaste skola. Inte långt från Jim and Buen ligger Mount Kosciuszko, Australiens högsta berg. Under vintermånaderna, juni, juli och augusti, Ligger här snö på ett område lika stort som Schweiz. Med den här bilden från The Snowy Mountains och Mount Kosciuszko går vi över till programmet.
Now bang. Wally, we'll Wally. We'll Oi! Pain, 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 pain. I'm here, pain. David, are these Australian sheepdogs? This fellow is a, uh, a red kelpie, which started in Australia and uh, they're very famous right through Australia. He is a, a sheepdog. This fellow is a German coolie. And there are a few of those in Australia, but not nearly as many as the Red Kelpie. And how do you work with the dogs? Uh, I work with uh, whistle and also voice. Uh, the commands are very simple, such as go back, come behind, push them up, um, and occasionally you can make them sit uh, at a distance. If instead of the dogs you would have men doing the same job, how many men would you need? Well. Um, for example, I can, I can use these two dogs and shift, say, 2,000 sheep. Now, to do the same job, I would need probably six men all on motorbikes. How would you describe your job? I am a farmer. I have to look after sheep, cattle, machinery, and all the other little things that go with farming. What is Jim and Buen? Jim and Buen is my family property where I live with my wife, Jane, and my two children, Sarah and Jonathan. And he told me that he was very pleased with his Jim and Buen is 200 kilometres south of Canberra um, and about 30 kilometres from the Victorian border. Um, we are on the eastern side of the mountains and the mountains are the Snowy Mountains? Yes, that's correct. Uh, Mount Kosciuszko is um, about 80 kilometres from here. Mount Kosciuszko, would that always be snow-clad? Uh, no, it's not always snow-clad. The snow falls in the mountains around early June and it stays there uh, right through until end of October, beginning of November. Do you get snow here? Yes, we get snow here um, one, once or twice a year, perhaps, uh, but it doesn't last very long. Normally it melts within 24 hours. This is Jim and Bjorn with the homestead, the house with the trees around it. There are also sheds for machinery, hay, grain, and general storage, and the cattle yards. How big is this property? Uh, Jim and Bjorn is 7,300 acres. Can you make a good living from that? You can make a, a reasonable living. It's getting harder and harder all the time. For how long has Jim and Bjorn been in the family? My grandfather bought Jim and Bjorn in 1939 and he lived here uh, the rest of his life. Then my father lived here, and uh, now I'm living here. Jane, where do you get your water from? We have two main methods of getting our water. Firstly, the water falls on the roof, the rainwater falls on the roof, and runs into the gutters and runs into a tank like this and is then pumped up to a high tank so that we have pressure for the bath, for the basin, for the sink. In the garden, when I'm watering that, we use water that comes from under the ground. Can you drink the rainwater? The rainwater is perfectly safe to drink. It's lovely. It runs from the roof through a small net to stop any leaves that have fallen on the roof. There is no pollution, you mean? There is no pollution. We have no factories for hundreds of miles around us. 
The house is designed so that there is a lot of roof area. We have corrugated iron. We have iron that runs up and down, which forces the water to run from the top of the roof down to the edges into the tanks. We collect all our water off the roof and it goes into a tank that's under the ground. And from that tank, we pump it up to this tank, which is higher than the roof of the house. And from here, it gravitates back down to the house so we can have showers and so forth. David, could you tell me the different stages in lamb marking? The first stage is we go into the paddock and we set up the yards. Um, and then once the yards are set up, we go and muster the sheep. What is that when you muster the sheep? That's getting them together and moving them where we want them to be. You use, uh, use dogs and, and you push them in where you want them. Once they are in the yard, we draft off the lambs from the ewes. The ewes go ahead and they go into a smaller little yard where each one is drenched. Drenching, what is that? Drenching is uh, medicine that kills worms that are inside the, the sheep. Uh, the worm eggs are on the grass and when they eat they pick the, the eggs up. David, what happens here? 
We put an earmark on one side, which is the registered earmark. On the other side, we put another earmark, which is the age mark. We put a, vac a injection just underneath the skin, which stops tetanus and blood poisoning and other diseases. And we cut off the tail. Mr. Gaston, you are David's father. How long have you worked with sheep? Uh, all my life, really. Uh, as a schoolboy, we used to come home from school holidays and we'd help a father landmarking and uh, handling the sheep, help us assist with the shearing. So I suppose all my life. Sarah, what do you do when you come home from school? I feed the chooks and collect the eggs and I ride my horse sometimes and I feed my horse and I ride my bike. Jonathan, what do you do when you come home from school? I feed the chooks and I ride my bike. How many eggs were there today? Sixteen eggs. Yes. How do your children get to school? The children go to school by bus. The bus comes to Jim and Buen, and the children walk from the house down to the bus stop. The other children that get on the bus here come from as far away as 17 kilometres down the road and their mother will drive them to the bus stop and they will get on and she will come back in the afternoon and pick them up. Excuse me Jane, is this what you get in the mail? This is what has come in the mail today. When you run short of things and you live in the country you can often ring up the store in Dalgetty and ask them to send extras of Today I got bread and milk because I was running short. How often do you get mail? We get it on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays regularly. We get papers and the letters on those days always. And if you need extras, I can have them sent out. And how far away is it to the post office? 32 kilometres and it is only a very small post office there. Dalgetty is a small town on the Snowy River. It has a shop, a post office, a hotel, a school and 27 people. There's 
an old Australian stockman lying, dying, and he gets himself up onto one elbow and turns to his mates who are gathered round him and he says, Watch me wallabies feed, mate. Watch me wallabies feed. They're a dangerous breed, mate. So watch me wallabies feed. All together now. Tiny kangaroo down. Spot. Tiny kangaroo down. Tiny kangaroo down. Spot. Mrs. Val Rooney, you are the only teacher at this school. Yes. Dalgetty School is a very small school. We have only 21 children altogether, ranging in ages from 5 to 12, and in grades from kindergarten to year 6. And here's another one. We've got some fields or paddocks. We don't really call them fields in Australia, but we've got these paddocks here where they've obviously been making the crops. And we see these beautiful golden colours. Are these summer colours or winter colours? Summer. summer summer colours that we see there. Very beautiful colours. Right, we're going to read our poem now about my country. I think you all know it, don't you? Some of it anyway. Now this poem is about our country, which is, we've talked about this morning, which is brown and red, and generally not very green because it's so dry. My Country by Dorothea McKellar. I love a sunburned country, a land of sweeping plains, of rugged mountain ranges, of droughts and flooding rains. I love her far horizons, I love her jewel sea, her beauty and her terror, the wide brown land for me. How do you manage to teach seven classes at the same time, or is it five? Well, we have seven grades altogether, with difficulty sometimes. <laughs> It is quite a, a challenge to teach so many grades in the one room. Uh, we work in groups for a lot of the, lot of the time. Uh, other times we get together for such things as music and poetry, physical education, things like that we work together. Take me go all back, Jack, take me go all back. He lives somewhere out there on the track. Back, so take me go all back. All together now. Tommy kangaroo down. Spot. Tommy kangaroo down. Tommy kangaroo down. Spot. Tommy kangaroo down. Is this an Australian garden? No, this garden is English. A lot of the houses of this generation had English gardens around them. The early settlers tried to create a little bit of the old country when they built their gardens. Can you tell me a little about the trees and the flowers? As you can see, it is very early spring. The leaves haven't come out on the deciduous trees. Deciduous trees? The trees that lose their leaves in winter. Australian natives don't lose their leaves. They have leaves all year round. The English trees will lose their leaves. But doesn't that mean you have to water them a lot then in summer? Yes, you need a lot of water in a garden like this. Australian plants don't need as much water. But if you create a garden like this one, you have to have a lot of water. In our garden, there are a lot of birds, mainly Australian birds. These birds here are cockatoos. And here are some parrots. I have a problem that when we feed the chickens, the parrots come down and eat the grain. <laughs> I think it might be an idea for us all to go for a walk before dinner though, don't you? Yeah. Has everyone finished their tea? Yes. We might Would you see like... some more goats. Yes. 
Why do you choose to camp here? We love coming down here to the Snowy River. It is not very far away from home and it is easy to get here. We love seeing the natural bush and if we're lucky, we see wild goats and on one occasion we even saw some deer. That yellow tree, what's that? That is a wattle tree. The river at the moment is running quite high, which means that it is flooding because of all the rain further up the valley. Where that wattle tree is standing would normally be an island in the middle of the river. What does it look like in the middle of the summer, around Christmas? The river is much lower, very still, very clear and very pretty. How about we go back and have some dinner, Ben, shall we? Come on. Come on, Ben. Ben, ben come on. <laughs> 